Sure. So we just did this problem out by hand, and we got our solution with our answer and remainder. But what if we were going to punch this in the calculator? So let's do that. Let's put in 236,377 divided by 403. Problem is, our calculator is going to give us a decimal. But you'll notice, 586, that is the first part of our answer here. So what that's telling us is this, our answer is 586 with some stuff left over. There are a couple of ways we can go about this. Probably the simplest way is just this. We write down the 586. We go back to our calculator and we type in 586 times multiply by the number we just divided by, which was 403. 586 times 403 is 236, 158. That's how much was used up by the 586 out of our beginning amount of 236,377. So the remainder is the difference between those two. So on the calculator, I'll type in the 236,377 minus the 236,158. Now I'm going to show you a little trick on the calculator. I want to subtract the previous answer. I could type it back in, but I don't have to. Um, if you have the TI-30, all of those will have, have an answer function. It's on bottom. It's, it's actually in the same location as it is on my video calculator here. You have to hit the second key. Then you'll see above this key here, it says ANS. You hit that. That's saying put the previous answer in there. And it'll subtract. Give you the 219, which is our remainder. So let's do one more example like that so you guys can practice. Um, let's do 47,891 divided by 47. Find, using your calculator, find the solution and the remainder. If you don't have a calculator, that's fine. If you have a calculator on your cell phone, that works too, if you need to. So do 47,891 divided by 47, which gives me 1,018. That is my answer part here. So now I'm going to take that 1,018 I have to type it back in so I get rid of the decimal, 1,018, and multiply by the number I divided by, the 47. Gives me 47,846. I wrote it underneath here so that I could subtract it. 47,891 minus that. 47,891 minus, I'm going to use the, the answer key again, the 47,846. Tells me there's 45 left over. So the second and then ANS. Yep, ANS, you see it's actually written above the key slightly. It's here's the key, but it's written right up above it. And that's the oh sure my calculator is a little small print to see from your seat. No, it's the oh, gotcha. Nope, I got half of them shut off. Sure. Now, normally when you guys walk into the room, I didn't do it today because I didn't warn you about it yesterday. A lot of time, normally when you walk into the room at the beginning of class, I will have a couple of problems up on the board for you guys to try out. For a couple things, one to to give you something to do if you're if you're here a few minutes early and you're waiting for me to to get started and also gives you a little bit of reminder of what we did yesterday. So we're going to do that right now. I'm going to throw up a, a question like this.
Try that one and see what you come up with for a solution. I'm going to pause the recording so you guys can have a couple minutes to work. So where would we start on this one? All right, so we have enclosing symbols, right? We actually have a couple of them. We always go left to right if we have multiple items on the same level. So this would be the first one we hit. We find its other end. Is that it? Nope. That one? Nope. we got to go to this one. This one pairs up with this one. So we got to go past it. So we're looking at that blue box is where we start. That's our first enclosing symbol. Now inside there, the order of operations, remember those levels of priority still apply. Are there any other enclosing symbols? One more set of parentheses. So we have to start inside the green box. In there, again, order of operations still applies. Any other enclosing symbols in there? No. Exponents? No. Multiplication and division? Yes, we have 5 times 3, which is 15. Now the rest of that problem is rewritten with nothing changed except for the 5 times 3 being replaced with 15. Now I'm going to start to re erase and replace. I just put a second line there so the original problem is still up there to refer back to. So now we're still working inside this green box, inside that set of parentheses. All that's left to do there is to subtract 18 minus 15, which is 3. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that we've reduced that set of parentheses to a single number, I can take them out. But remember, yesterday we discussed you got to be careful that you, in case you have to put multiplication in. Do I have to put multiplication in in front of this set of parentheses? No, because there's already an addition symbol there. There's a multiplication symbol after it, so there's already operations on both sides. So we don't have to worry about putting in any operations. Now we're back out to this set of parentheses, back out to the blue box. So in there, we have to go through our levels of priority again. Any other enclosing symbols? No. Exponents? Yes. 3 to the power of 2, or 3 squared, which is 9. Any other exponents there? Nope. Multiplication and division. Yeah, one of each, but we go left to right. So we have 27 divided by 9, which is 3. And over here we have 3 times 7, which is 21. So we take those out and put in the 21. So now we're down to only addition and subtraction inside that set of parentheses. And the first one will be 7 minus 3, which is... 4, and then we still have the plus 21 there. I'm just rewriting it to kind of shrink things down a bit here. Now, still inside the parentheses, we have 4 plus 21, which is 25. Now, again, those parentheses are down to a single number, so I can take them out. What do I need to do yet? There was no symbol between the 5 and the outside of the parentheses that's implying this multiplication. So I got to put in the multiplication. What's next? Yep, there's no other enclosing symbols, no exponents, so we're multiplying or dividing. 5 times 25 is 125. And now all that's left is to add 9 plus 125 is 134. So that all reduces to 134. Anybody have 134? A couple? Okay. It's a start. Let's look at another one.
Try that one in your notes. Where would we start on this one? Well, our first step in closing symbol, the first enclosing symbol we run into is the fraction bar, which tells us we have to do everything on top first. So I'm just going to write that off to the side here. What do we need to do first on top? Any other enclosing symbols? No. no. Any exponents? No. no. Multiplication or division? Yeah. yeah. 3 times 16 is 48. So now we have 7 plus 48, which is 55. So that's the top. On bottom, we have enclosing symbols, don't we? So we're going to go left to right. We're going to do this one first. In there, do we have any other enclosing symbols? No. Exponents. Yes. Square root of 9. And now I'm just going to give that to you because we haven't talked about square roots yet. The square root of 9 is 3. Now we have just addition in there. 5 plus 3 is 8. We've reduced what's in that parentheses to a single number, so I don't need the parentheses anymore. Moving on to the next enclosing symbol, this set of parentheses. All that is, all that there is to do there is the 12 divided by 6, which is 2. Again, we've reduced that parentheses to a single number, so I'm going to get rid of the parentheses. And we have 8 divided by 2, which is 4. So we have 55 divided by 4. Four goes into fifty-five. Thirteen times. Thirteen times four is fifty-two. So there's three left over. So thirteen is a remainder of three. Usually when I give you order of operation problems, I won't leave a remainder in them like that. Kind of combining two skills together there. Any questions on those? Okay, well, I want to talk about a couple of little things then. Since we've, we've looked at some of those exponents, let's start out talking about those a bit here. But before we actually do that, I want to talk a little bit about this. What's the solution to that? 8 divided by 0. A lot of people would say 0, wouldn't they? Not quite correct. If you have your calculator handy, go ahead and punch that in and see what your calculator tells you. Calculator gives you a nasty message, doesn't it? Saying error. Well, what does that mean? Why does your calculator say error? Well, dividing by zero is a bad thing. And I'll explain to you why that is in a minute. But what if we do this problem? 0 divided by 8. That one is 0. Your calculator says 0, and that is fine. So why is that different? At one point, a lot of us were probably taught, hey, if you got division and one of the numbers is 0, the answer is 0. Well, why is this one actually 0 when this one isn't? Why does this one give you an error? Well, yeah, the definition, there's, there's a couple of definitions of division. One of them is you're splitting it into this many groups. How big is each group? Well, if you're taking zero items and you're splitting it into eight, eight groups, each of those eight groups has nothing in it. It has zero items in it. If you have eight groups, and you're, if you have eight items and you're splitting it into zero groups, well, you can't do that. There's no way to, to make zero groups. The technical definition of division Remember we said division is not its own operation. It is a byproduct of multiplication. Now I'm going to put some symbols in here, but don't let it get to you. I'll put in numbers to explain it in just a little bit. A divided by B equals C is defined as C is the number such that C times B equals a. In other words, you're reversing the numbers. So what does that mean? 
Well, 12 divided by 6 equals 2 because 2 times 6 equals 12. So now back to our zeros. Zero divided by eight can equal zero because if I go backwards, zero times eight, does that equal the zero? Yeah, it does. Zero times anything is zero. But if I did 8 divided by 0, get this number. Is there any number here? If I want to reverse this, if I take that number and multiply it back by 0, that can give me 8? No, because anything, anything at all times 0 has to equal 0. In fact, there's, it's called the zero product rule in math. You don't need to memorize that. But the zero product rule simply states two things. Again, I'm going to use a symbol. X times zero equals zero. No matter what number X is. It could be 72, 359, negative 24. No matter what X is. When you multiply it by zero, the answer is zero. Another version of that zero product rule looks like this. That if two numbers multiply to make zero, if a times b is zero, then either a equals zero, or b equals zero, or both a and b equals zero. If two numbers multiply to make zero, one of them has to, one or both of them has to be zero. That's the only way two numbers can multiply to make zero. So because of all that, it's a long answer to a short question, isn't it? We cannot divide by zero. Your calculator, when you tried to divide eight divided by zero, gave you an error. A computer would do the same thing. Seems like a very simple concept, a very simple kind of a nitpicky detail, but if any of you uh, work with computer programming or anything like that at any point, even programming an Excel spreadsheet, which uh, many of you will have to take an Excel class at some point during your degree, you have to be careful not to allow it to divide by zero. The one radical example I use, this was in the late 1990s, um, one of the U.S. battleships, actually yeah, battleships. I'm just trying to remember for a second whether it was a battleship or an aircraft carrier, but it was one of the battleships. When they first started using satellite navigation in their battleships, they had, if you just put, you know, on the globe, wherever you were at, it would send a signal to the satellite and it would give the computer, the navigational computer, your coordinates on the globe. And so all you had to do is enter the coordinate that you wanted to go to. And the computer would go to the satellite, get its current location, and calculate the quickest path to get there. Now, believe it or not, you've always been taught that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. On the, the Earth, that's not the truth. The shortest distance between two points is actually an arc. That's why, you, that's why you needed the computer to calculate that path, because the world isn't perfectly round. So you actually, you technically, to get between two points on the globe, the shortest distance is to go over the top. Kind of a weird idea. But anyway, the computer would calculate that shortest distance. And it had actually been in use for over a year and a half, not quite two years, when they finally entered a coordinate that somewhere in the calculation gave them a zero, and they had to divide by zero. Guess what happened to the computer? It locked up. Guess the only way that they had that they could reset the computer? They had to shut it down and restart it. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Navy battleships. They are huge. Um, the population on some of those battleships is more than some major cities. 
the time it takes to power down all the electronics on those ships and to repower them is several hours. So we had a multi-billion dollar Navy battleship sitting dead in the water for several hours because they had to reboot the whole computer system. Because they didn't think to put in a warning as some sort of a, a thing in there to stop it. That, hey, if this number is zero, stop here and recalculate so you don't try to divide by zero. So I mentioned that this is kind of, like I said, this is kind of an extreme example of dividing by zero causing problems. But as you take like an Excel, you know, programming Excel spreadsheet and stuff like that, you do have to be careful not to divide by zero. Even in some of your finance and accounting classes, you'll be asked to do Excel spreadsheets for some stuff. You have to be careful of that. Okay, so moving on from that, our next item, we want to talk about exponents a little bit more. We've seen things like this, 3 squared. Now, I've been careful to keep it to squared because we haven't had a chance to really talk about it and define what that means yet. This little symbol up here is referred to as a power. It is a type of an exponent. When we have this, there are two pieces. That is the power. This down here is the base. The base is the number being operated on, and the power is doing the operation. So 3 to the power of 2, or 3 squared is how we usually would, would say that. This means you take two 3's and multiply them together. And of course we know that's 9. So if I had 5 to the power of 3, that is saying, is it 3 5's or 5 3's? It's the 5. We're operating on the 5. So it's the 5 that is being multiplied repeated times. And the power is telling how many of them. There's 3 of them. So 5 times 5 is 25. Times another 5 is 125. So 8 to the power of 4. What's that define? What's the definition of that? Four eighths, four eighths. Eight times eight times eight times eight. Which should be, what, 4,096, I believe. Now, I don't expect you guys to know those off the top of your head. So how do you calculate them? Again, I know some of you don't have your calculators yet. But to do that, to enter eight to the power of four, you would enter eight. And most of you will have a key that looks like this one right here. It's called the carrot key. Looks like this on your calculator. So you press that, you, you type in the 8, then you press that caret key, then you put in the power of 4. Now my calculator actually moves it up and makes it look like an exponent. Most of your calculators will just put in that symbol, so it'll look like this. Then I hit enter or equals and it gives me 4096. So those of you with a calculator, let's have a little raise. So 5 to the power of 6. <laughs> I may have done these a few times before. <laughs> Go ahead and try your calculator and see if you get 15,625. I, I may have mentioned yesterday that calculations in math, oh, I mentioned it a little bit today, actually, they're about patterns. Once you start to see the patterns, your calculations become easy. I've worked with this stuff pretty much every day of my life for like 19 years now, so if I didn't see the pattern, I'd be going nuts. It's debatable as to whether I am anyway. But. Well, actually, what you're saying is you hit the 5 and then that the six. Exactly. You hit the 5 first. You do type in the base first, hit the caret key, and then you put in the power. Okay. So now some things with those powers that we want to, to work with. What if I have x to the third? Of course, we know that means just x times x times x, right? What if I take that x to the third and I multiply by x to the fourth? Well, we know x to the third is 3x's multiplied together. 
x to the fourth is four x's multiplied together. If we're multiplying them, we're going to multiply them all together. Well, now how many x's do we have? We have seven x's being multiplied together. The result is x to the seventh. Or if I had like 9 to the 5th times 9 to the 2nd. This is 5 9's being multiplied together. This is 2 9's multiplied together. If I'm multiplying those all together, I have 7 9's multiplied together. I don't have to do out the, the actual number. I just want to leave it as an exponent for now. Well, both of these came out to be 7. That doesn't mean that any time you multiply exponents, you get a power of 7. Where did that 7 come from? Yeah, here we had 3 and 4. We add those together to get 7, x to the 7th. Here we had 5 and 2. We add those together to get 7, 9 to the 7th. So if I have y to the 8th times y to the 5th, what's that have to become? Yeah, 8 plus 5 is 13. It's going to be y to the power of 13. So I'll have you do z to the 11th times z to the 3rd. We get z to the... 14th, good. 11 plus 3 is 14, so z to the 14th. x to the 5th times y to the 7th, what do you get? Careful. Notice up here, all of these had the same base, didn't they? I can only combine the powers like that if I have the same base. These do not. So this is literally just x to the 5th, y to the 7th. The only thing I can do is take out the multiplication symbol. Sorry about that. That wasn't very nice. Yeah. I'm a math teacher, which means I'm not a nice person. So let's say I have x to the fifth divided by x to the second. Well, if we look at this, x to the fifth, again, is 5x's. x to the second is 2x's. Well, if I'm dividing, I can just divide out and cancel out two of those x's. What am I left with? x to the third, three x's. Well, rather than beating this to death, if you look at this, what pattern do you see? Or what do you see happening here? Can you predict if I had y to the ninth divided by y to the fourth, what the answer would be? 9 minus 4, very good. y to the fifth. Because here you had 5 and you canceled out 2. You basically took away 2 of them. 5 minus 2 is 3. x to the 3rd. Same here. You would have 9 y's. And now here you'd have 4 y's. If you divided those out or canceled them out, you'd be left with 5 y's. Or y to the 5th. 9 minus 4. So if I have z to the 8th divided by z to the fifth, what do I get? Z to the third, very good, eight minus five. What if I have x to the third to the fourth power? Well, that fourth power means I have four of those x to the thirds being multiplied together, doesn't it? Well, each of those x to the thirds is three x's, isn't it? Those are being multiplied together. How many x's do I have there? Twelve. X to the twelfth. Again, one way to come about that using just the 3 and the 4 would have been to multiply them. 3 times 4 makes 12. x to the 12. So if I have y to the 7th to the 5th power, 
it's going to give me y to the 35. 7 times 5 is 35. So y to the 35. We will go over these again later. Just putting them out there so that we have them to use when we're working with our variables. Just because we got an extra minute here or two, let's take a look at some other little quirks with powers. What's x to the power of 0? Most people would say 0. But some people would say x. It's a good try. <coughs> let's look at it this way. Let's say 5 to the power of 0. Let's use a number to see what comes out here. Remember yesterday we talked about when you multiply two negatives, the definition of multiplication breaks down and it doesn't work. So what did we do? We looked for a pattern. And we defined the result to be a pattern. So it had to be positive because that's what made the pattern continue. We'll do the same thing here. 5 to the power of 4, if you punch that in your calculator, is 625. 5 to the power of 3 is 125. 5 to the power of 2 is 25. If we look at this, when we start with a 5, each time that power gets smaller by 1, what happens to our answer? It's divided by 5, right? Well, let's see if that continues. 5 to the power of 1 is just 5, right? The power got smaller by 1, the result was divided by 5. So if we assume that that pattern will continue, 5 to the power of 0 has to be, well, what's 5 divided by 5? 1. No matter what number we put in there, 5, 6, 24, whatever, that number to the power of 0, that pattern will bring us to 1. So anything to the power of 0 is going to be 1. Now, I won't do it to you guys in here because your quizzes are in my math lab, but when I used to do paper and pencil quizzes and for like my tech math classes and stuff like that, I will occasionally throw a question out on a quiz that might look something like this. What's that have to equal? If you're starting to combine numbers, you're missing something. This whole thing's to the power of zero, isn't it? Anything to the power of zero is one. So none of this stuff in here matters. It's all to the power of zero. It's one. Now, I'm not going to do that to you, just so you know. But I've had classes where I've done that for fun. Like I said before, I find myself funny. That's what matters here. I won't do that to you. No. Now, now you know it might come in a different class, though. No, I won't do that to you. I value being able to walk out in the parking lot without having to listen for revving engines first. But if we kept going with this, let's see what 5 to the power of negative 1 would give. Well, if we divide by 5 again, that'd be 1 fifth. You can see these are fractions now. 5 to the negative 2 divided by 5 again would be 1 25th. We're going to look at those negative powers more later, but you can see it all fits a pattern. Okay, it is time for our first break. It's actually 10.02. So let's take 10 minutes and we'll come back at 10.12 and we'll continue.